Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at some of the problems often encountered with perceptrons. We saw that perceptrons are a simple enough model and they are linear, they work best for data that is linearly separable. What if the data is not linearly separable? We still can learn a perceptron using gradient descent. It will not have perfect performance, like 100% performance, but it still will give you some performance. You can still use that to classify. But there may be other problems associated with that. One of the common problems encountered with using perceptrons on data that is not linearly separable is weight thrashing. Weight thrashing will occur when there are two equivalent models that both have similar error and the model cannot decide between the two because both are equivalent in the eyes of the training algorithm. And that happens where the weights oscillate from one to the another, keep doing that and not really achieve a convergence point. So here we can see that the weights are oscillating between these two models and fails to pick one of them as the best model because both of them have equal error. And if that ever happens, then we have to go in and stop the model. So it will go on this infinite loop of finding the minimum um, error version, but it cannot seem to find it because there um, is not one, but multiple of those, and it cannot really select between those which, which is better. Another reason why perceptrons are not desirable is that they generally have mediocre generalization, which means that it finds a solution. Even if the data is linearly separable, it finds a solution. Is that solution the best solution? Not likely. For example, we have these two lines here, one and two. Both separate these two sets of points, and we can clearly see that line number two is the better line here out of these two because it is having more distance between both the sets of points. But line number one is very close to the blue points, and uh, it if there is one another data point which occurs, let's say here, then this line, line number one, would no longer be the solution, right? So if you, you want a point, a line which is maximum distance from both these sets of points, um, though that line would be the best line. So it does not really find that line because you're not searching for that. You only are searching, telling the algorithm to minimize the error. And whenever it classifies perfectly, it has reached that minimum error stage and it's going to return that solution. So it's not going to make a, a difference between solutions which are already able to classify perfectly. So it's not going to distinguish between them, which is, again, the same problem as weight thrashing, right? So because it's inability to dis distinguish between similar solutions and select one of them, whichever would be better. So by looking at these solutions, we can see that two is better than one, but the algorithm cannot do it do on its own. Another reason why perceptrons may not be preferable is it can result in overtraining. We are going to train the algorithm until convergence, right? That's the criterion that we have, do until convergence. And convergence is usually set when the weight values don't change much. And there often can, there can be really small changes to the weights that keep happening and the algorithm keeps going on and on um, just to find that minimum weight. And what happens is that it trains more than required. So this is similar to overfitting, but it just, we are going to contextualize in the, it, the this, con this contextualize this in training time. And that's why we call it overtraining. So it's going to keep training, keep finding um, these updates for the weights, uh, but 
those updates are not resulting in a significant increase in performance at test time and that's why they it's called overtraining so for example here somewhere somewhere at this point right at this point the algorithm reached its maximum potential at test time right this is seems like the peak for test right so it reached the maximum potential at test time but it kept training it kept training but this extra amount of training here led to a decrease in performance at test time which is not really desirable right so you want the model to have better performance on test data set and because the model kept making incremental updates to its weights and kept on training you actually encounter a decrease in test performance and uh, it's very similar to overfitting but we're calling this overtraining because it's attributed to the model training for more time than necessary.